What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where today we are focusing solely on the writing and on the books. However, there's a little bit of the business element in there because that's what the book's about. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome for the first time. If you're new here, please take a minute to go ahead and subscribe because multiple times a week I put out new videos all about books and business, including writing videos, videos taking you through my writing process, videos about the publishing industry itself, tons of book reviews, that's probably the bread and butter of this channel is book reviews, and then also business ethics commentary because I myself am a writer and small business owner and all of my small business stuff kind of ties in with with writing so it all kind of comes together here on this channel and I hope you guys enjoy it also if you enjoy this channel you can take a look in the description below where we've got these cute your morning guru mugs on the merch page so how do books and business all come together for this video well let me tell you at the beginning of November, I made a video announcing my project for NaNoWriMo, which is a book series called The Boss Babes that I've been working on. That is a series of books all about a young journalist who is trying to take down a family that has been found to be operating multiple pyramid schemes, but the family holds a lot of power politically and financially, and so that is hard to do. I've based a lot of this book on my experience doing anti-MLM videos and things like that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the series, how it relates to the anti-MLM movement, give you guys some updates on the writing for that, and then just take you a little bit through my writing process itself. Now, last week, if you watched the video I put out, which was my business owner and writer day in the life vlog video, I did give a few updates on that book series and where it's going, but here's a quick recap. When I originally started plotting out the boss babes, my first thought originally, like at the very beginning was that I thought it'd be cool to have it as a TV series. But obviously I don't have the budget to produce anything like that right now, but I did write the first episode as like a pilot, like a TV pilot type of thing. And then I decided, let me take these outlines that I have for episodes and turn it into a book series instead, because that could be fun. And I think there are some anti-MLM style books out there and books about taking down pyramid schemes, but you know, I figure that's something that I talk about a lot on this channel, so writing a book series about it is perfect for me, especially because I critique business gurus and coaches and boss babe hustle culture lifestyle so much that writing about that is kind of second nature at this point, so that's what I've been working on. When I was working on this book at the beginning of NaNoWriMo, I was on the Amtrak train to and from New Orleans because for Halloween I was visiting my friend RK, who's the co-host on Your Morning Guru with me. We were hanging out for Halloween. So on the Amtrak train ride back, I was using this thing right here, the Alpha Smart Neo 2, which is where I what I use to often write in public. Like when I'm out in public, I'll often write in notebooks and do outlining there and things like that. But this is great for typing in public because laptops are expensive and laptops need to constantly recharge and they constantly want to hook up to the internet and just all this other stuff that this thing doesn't have any issues with because it's just a little LCD screen and that's all I need. And then I just just type and it stores eight files and then I plug it into the computer. So I was working a lot on the opening to book two, which spoiler alert involves an MLM boss babe leader founder of a pyramid scheme type company to get arrested at a convention. That's kind of the opening scene of book two is that she's getting arrested for running a pyramid scheme while at that pyramid scheme or at that multi-level marketing schemes yearly convention. That's what's going on. So I was writing this convention scene and it was going well. And the more I started writing this book and the more I started outlining book two, I realized that I had originally planned this to be a series of like 10 novellas, but I think that book two was going to be a full novel. But book one definitely wasn't. The plot I had for book one, the pacing of book one, and that's when I realized that book one seemed kind of like a prequel that's kind of setting everything up kind of a backstory type of thing. And I've seen some rapid release book series like this that have done that where you have a series or a first book in a series that sets everything up and then you get like the real meaty books from there. So that's what I think I'm gonna try with this actually, is to have book two be a full novel, book three, four, a bunch of them will probably be full novels as well, and it'll probably be a little bit 
it'll probably be fewer books than I originally intended, but some of them will have a little more information and develop a little more. Because I was just getting really invested in book two and where it was going, but book one really did feel complete at the shorter length. So I think book one's going to be a little prologue book that's going to come out towards the second half of 2023, and then book two is going to come out after that, and book two will probably be the first one to come out in paperback. I'm not sure. I'm still deciding how about the whole publishing process. Along the way, I found a new journal that I've absolutely loved writing in and I want to show it to you guys. Not sponsored, I just really love this new journal I got. I was at this bookstore in Asheville, North Carolina a couple weeks ago called Malaprops and I love this bookstore. At the bookstore I found this journal right here. Oh hello Chewy! It's good to see you buddy! Good boy! Hello! Yes! At the bookstore, I found this journal, which was called The Draft Writing Journal. It's by a company called Baron Fig. I had never heard of it before, but looking through the features of it, I thought this notebook looks really cool and I want to give it a try. Plus, you know it's fancy because it comes in its own box. And I love unboxing journals. Anyone else, let me know in the comments below. So I got this journal and I started loving what I was doing with it. So first of all, very nice pages, lays very flat, loving everything about that. And I thought I can use this journal for mapping out book two, for outlining it, storyboarding it, all of that. So that's what I started doing. The beginning of the book starts with this like project planner page where you map out the different steps of your projects and how long it's going to take to do each one and what milestones you have to meet in order to hit those goals. So this kind of helps me plan out my rough publishing schedule, though I'm sure I'm going to nail that down more as I go along. But it was good to kind of have an idea of where everything was going to be, especially since this is the first series that I'm going to be attempting rapid release on. I always wanted to do some rapid release women's fiction, and especially I'd love to try rapid release romance in the future, but I'm new to that type of publishing. So I wanted to kind of get some ideas for that. So my goal is to hopefully have book one, that prequel book, ready to go by this coming August, August of 2023, and have that ready to release then. So I mapped out how long it's going to take to get everything edited, get the cover design process started, get promotion started, and then also have, you know, books two and three ready to go. Because if I want to do rapid release, then the idea is I'm probably going to have less than two months in between each book's release, have one book come out less than 60 days later, try to have another book come out because that way it'll still stay fresh in the Amazon algorithm the whole time or at least that's kind of the goal and see how that works. I then started storyboarding. It has a bunch of pages to storyboard what's going on with some boxes that you can kind of draw and map things out. So I worked on that for a while and then from there it has these character profile pages where you are supposed to answer questions to map out a bunch of things about your characters. So this, this kind of helped me as I was going along and thinking about some of the side characters or characters who, because this is kind of an ensemble cast, there are a couple people who stand out as main characters, but it becomes more of an ensemble cast piece the longer it goes on and the more you get to know everybody because it's not only told through one perspective. So it helped me not just like, I had the main protagonist that I had figured out pretty well, but then there were also some other characters that were going to become major players in the story and it helps me map them out as well. From there it has like a place for an outline. I won't hold it up too long so that nobody gets spoilers. From there it has a lot of blank drafting pages in it as well where you can just write things out but I decided to use these not for like drafting the text of the story itself since I mostly do that typing on the Alpha Smart or on my Google Doc but instead to write out yearning passages. So this was a thing that I had a novel writing professor when I was in grad school. We read a lot of craft essays about this concept Concept and we really tried to nail down this idea of the yearning passage, which basically what it is, is when you have a main character, a point of view character, someone who's going to have a great deal of agency within the story, you want to make it pretty clear to the reader what their goal and motivation is. And a lot of times we talk about the want and the need that a character has in a story. So you want to make that want and need pretty clear so you know what is motivating all those characters' actions and what is going to be relevant in that story versus irrelevant in the story is all going to tie back to whether the thing that character is doing has any relevance to their yearning. So their yearning is usually what they need, some kind of like greater self-actualization, emotional fulfillment, something on the human scale like that, but it could also be part of their goals and then their goals are usually going to be in service of that overall yearning, if that makes sense. When I wrote 90s Kids, which I wrote in that class, I had to do a lot of the writing the yearning passages for Bex and Nicole and figure out what it was that they both 
wanted um, outside of just like we knew Bex wanted to get to explore the 1980s. We knew she wanted to get to travel back in time, but where emotionally did that come from? I ended up writing this yearning passage about how she felt very trapped in the world that she was in and wanted somewhere where she could be someone new and feel a sense of freedom. And then for Nicole, she wants to accomplish all this cool science stuff. She wants to be considered smart. She wants all of these things. Where does that come from? Well, there's a passage in there about how she doesn't really feel like she connects to a lot of people and she feels like she doesn't have a friend. She doesn't have someone that really understands her. So through, through writing those yearning passages, I was able to figure that out. And then you want to try to figure out a way to kind of weave that passage into the beginning of the story, generally first or second chapter, though. I just want to be clear when I'm giving this advice, like there are no hard and fast writing rules. If you don't do this, it's not going to immediately make your story bad or anything like that. So I'm just saying that I decided to write out this yearning passage for Zoe, who's one of the main characters, who is the journalist character. So I worked on her yearning passage in here and she's yearning to take down these uh, pyramid scheme companies. That's her goal. Okay, but why does she want that? Well, it's this like anger that's boiling within her because as it's going to be slowly revealed over the course of the story, I won't give any spoilers here. I'm not going to get into how, but she deep down believes that it's MLM companies that are responsible for her mother's death and her mother is the only person that she's ever felt truly connected to. So there's a moment of Zoe like trying to wrestle with her own sense of potential guilt versus like her emotional need to get this vengeance and things like that. So that's a, a yearning passage that I was writing for her. And then I decided to write them for like a bunch of characters, including ones that weren't evidently like main characters immediately from the beginning, but just to figure out better what's driving them to behave the way they are. So I've been taking some time to do some free writing sessions where I just kind of sit down with this notebook. I did that a lot in North Carolina. There's this one reading cabin that I go to there when I'm visiting Tyler's family out there. So I sit down at this little desk and I just gave myself time to work on those passages and I'm probably going to sit down with this notebook again maybe later today or tomorrow and do some more of that as well. But in addition to that, there's been the actual drafting stage that I've been working on a lot with this book. Book two, I had a lot of fun writing the scene where it opens up with the founder of an MLM company getting arrested at the convention. I thought that was so fun and I had such a fun time writing the convention scene and writing what all the characters look like and what they were all doing and trying to base some of it off of, you know, companies that I had roasted in the past, what their products might look like. This is very fun to draw from all of those different areas of experience. Experience. One thing I wanted to do in this video today with you guys is to actually get some writing done. A lot of times on my second channel on Your Morning Guru, we've had some writing streams there where we often set a timer and say, okay, during this time period, you have to write, don't do anything else other than write and, you know, get as much done as you can. Tell me what progress you made in the comments when you come back, all that kind of thing. And we had one of those the day before Thanksgiving and I got a lot done. I was really surprised actually at how successful I was with writing, just with staying focused and getting things done. So I thought I'd do a little bit of that in this video as well, just to show you guys kind of how this process works. So I've got over here on one area of my computer. I've got my Google Doc and then I'm going to pull up over here. Boop. We've got a little 30 minute timer. So I'm going to put 30 minutes on the clock and I'm going to give myself 30 minutes to write as much as I can. If you're watching this vlog, don't worry. I am not going to actually make you sit through the 30 minutes, though maybe you'll want to write while I'm doing some of this as well. But I just kind of wanted to show the process and how it works. So right now I'm going to give myself 30 minutes to write. I'm going to let you guys know how many words I wrote when I came back. I'll tell you where I am right now. I'm writing chapter five, which is a flashback chapter to when Zoe, one of our main characters, is in college and she's still studying journalism and her mother's still alive at this point. And this is before she really knows what pyramid scheme companies are. And she starts to learn about one. And I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but it's a chapter where you really get a sense of her connection with her mother and how close they are and how she's worried that a company might come in and try to ruin her mom's life and things like that. So I'm writing a big scene where they have a... It's like, you know how there's always those small town Christmas romances where everyone goes back to the the small town and falls in love with something? In this case, we've got Zoe, who's from the small town, going back home to visit her mom. And she's about to go to the small town New Year's party and start a big fight there. So I'm about to write a New Year's party fight scene.
So I just did a brief 30 minute writing sprint and I got about 1200 words written during that time, which was awesome. That was really cool. There were definitely some parts that I know aren't very good that I need to work on. Maybe work on reordering a few things that happened in this fight at the New Year's party at, uh, that I'm writing right now where we have a confrontation between Zoe, the anti-MLM journalist, and her mom's upline, the woman who has recruited her into this company called One Way that I came up with. I don't know what that could possibly be a reference to. Anyway, uh, they end up having this big fight at this New Year's party, and I'm trying to figure out how to best make the fight escalate into like throwing Christmas cookies at each other, maybe flipping a table, maybe have some punch go flying through the air. I think that could be funny. Anyway, I'm still trying to figure out how exactly it's going to escalate to those specific actions, but I did get a lot of the dialogue for that fight written where the two of them fire things back at each other because there's also this other little plot going on where Zoe is trying to figure out if she's a lesbian or not and she's trying to figure out how to tell her mother that potentially and she learns that the one-way company's founder has donated a lot of money for Proposition 8 in favor of banning same-sex marriage in California. This chapter takes place in 2008. It's a flashback chapter as I've mentioned before. There's also lots of My Chemical Romance in it because this series of books takes place over a long period of time with different things happening so we're trying to put some little cultural markers in there but anyway that's kind of how a writing sprint would go for me so I got a little bit of writing done during that and if you guys are interested in doing more writing sprints with me I highly recommend you check out the Your Morning Guru channel where I now host writing sprints I, we try to do once a week but sometimes it's a little less than that I think that my time creating anti-MLM videos has really inspired me in a lot of ways for writing this book, especially a lot of things. Sometimes in life, I think of things I want to do where I'm like, I really want to do this thing. This thing could be a little outrageous, but I really want to do it. And then sometimes if it is too unfeasible, I just put it in a book instead. I think, well, I'm a writer. I can write about somebody fictional doing that. And then I don't have to, you know, think about all the logistics of making it happen for real in my real life and, you know, all of that. So one example being, I always thought it would be fun to go fully undercover, like, you know, dress up as a different person, give myself a different identity and go undercover to some MLM conventions and report on them and pretend I want to join and get the inside scoop in that way. There's always been so many complications with that kind of thing, though. Like, for example, whether certain states have one party or two party consent recording, what I'm allowed to record in certain situations, not wanting to get sued, not wanting to blow my cover, having to raise the money to travel to certain conventions and also to have the ticket for admission to these things. There's a lot of things to think about, but because I think that would be something fun to do. I'm able to put it in a story and watch that kind of drama play out. I'm able to put a lot of these things that I, I think about doing to help expose these companies and make a character in the story do it instead. And I think that is one of the most fun things about writing is you can imagine these things that you really would want to do in your real life, especially in some kind of situation that you're normally immersed in. And you could just make someone else do it and save yourself all the hassle. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm, I'm writing for this book. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on this book overall like what you guys think of the idea of reading an anti-MLM centered book series a series all about taking down pyramid schemes and all about boss babes and and people examining you know these hustle culture girl boss horrific systems I'm I'm curious all uh, your guys thoughts on all of that I am going to be doing more videos and more writing vlogs just doing updates on this as we go along because I am hoping to have the first book ready to release by this coming August so stay tuned for more updates on that we'll have more videos coming throughout the rest of the month but I will be taking a little time off around Christmas otherwise I will see you guys again soon but in the meantime please continue to support small businesses and have a fantastic start to your day bye Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.